pounds, inches, gallons, yards, feet, ounces, pints, degrees Fahrenheit, tablespoons. Forget that, we're talking the metric system. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shoe Fu coming at ya. I'm Fu and with me as always is Shu. Shu know it. So in the last video, we spoke about how to make proper measurements. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about using the proper units and converting between those units. Let's get started. The metric system, a lesson from the lab skills unit. What is the metric system? It's an internationally accepted system of measurement, also known as the SI system, which stands for Système international d'unité. Conveniently, it's based on powers of 10 and not varying conversion factors. Yeah, I have no idea how many pints are in a quart or how many teaspoons are in a tablespoon. I'm always Googling that stuff. Yeah, it's pretty confusing. But with the metric system being based on powers of 10, it's a little bit more straightforward. Each unit used to be based on a physical prototype, but most are now based on unchanging properties of the universe. And speaking of physical prototypes, there is still one left the kilogram prototype, which is housed in France and pictured below. For example, life in meters equals the distance traveled by light in a vacuum in 1 299,792,458 of a second. Whoa. We've got some fun facts coming at you. The U.S. has technically recognized the metric system since 1893, but you didn't know that. When the Mendelhall order required all lengths and masses in the U.S. customary system to be based on metric standards. Congress also passed the Metric Conversion Act in 1988, making it the preferred system for U.S. trade and federal agencies. However, metrication was made voluntary for private industry. Get your act together, America. Approximately 30% of products manufactured in the U.S. use metric. All right, guys, get out your reference tables now. We'll wait as long as it takes. Seriously, get out your reference tables now. And go to table D, which is on the front page of your, of your reference tables. Um, and this has all the units used in chemistry class. If at any point this year you see a unit that you don't know what type of quantity it represents, check out table D. Taking a look at table D, selected units, we've got the symbol on the left, the name in the middle, and the quantity it represents on the right. Let's take a look at a few. M stands for meter, which is used to measure length. G is for grams, which is used to measure mass. PA is pascals, which is used to measure pressure and K is used to represent Kelvin, which measures the temperature. So how exactly does the metric system work? Prefixes based on factors of 10. You can look at table C for the name, symbol, and factor exponent. The base unit is 10 to the zero, or always equal to one. Prefixes indirectly tell you how the unit differs from the base unit. Taking a look at table C, selected prefixes, we see that the factor is listed on the left, the prefix is listed in the middle, and the symbol is listed on the right. Note that larger numbers are at the top and smaller numbers are on the bottom. So for example, something with the prefix kilo would be a larger number than something that had the prefix of pico. We're gonna do some labeling now. I would like you to label on the PowerPoint slide and also on your actual reference tables. We want to know where the base unit goes. Well, if you remember, the base unit is 10 to the zero. So it's going to be between kilo and deci, write 10 to the zero, and note that it is the base unit. So how do I convert units? With some of the units we use in chemistry, King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk will not help you. And if you have no idea what we're talking about, good. We need to use dimensional analysis so that we can convert between any metric units. And dimensional analysis is just a way of converting using conversion factors. 
Let's continue with shoe funario or shoe funario if you prefer. Number one. Let's say the base unit is listed somewhere in the problem. First thing you're going to do is write down the number given with units. Next, you're going to set up a conversion factor with a desired unit on top and the original unit on the bottom. Always put a 1 next to the unit that is larger. Fill in the other numerical value using table C. Note you will always use a positive exponent even if it's listed as negative. Multiply any numbers on top, divide by any numbers on the bottom, and then finally, write your answer with a new unit. We're going to do some examples to show you how these rules are applied. Let's begin with converting 5,618 grams to kilograms. All right, Fu, you ready? Yep. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to write down the number given with units. Yeah, that's right there. So I'm going to write down 5,618 grams. All right, sounds good. Now we want to multiply by a conversion factor. You multiply my conversion factor will be a fraction. Looks good. All right, now let's start with the unit that we want to cancel out. The original unit is going to go on the bottom. So what unit would that be? Okay, so I was given grams, so I'm going to write grams on the bottom. Looks good. And the unit that we desire is what? It's kilograms right there, so kilograms will go on top. Very good. Now we always want to put a 1 next to the unit that is larger. So looking at table C, which unit represents a larger value? Well, kilograms is higher up on table C, so that means it's larger. So I'm going to give the 1 to the kilogram. Exactly. Now we need to figure out what to put next to grams. So looking at table C again, what are we going to do? Well, on table C, I see that kilograms is 10 to the third, which means there are 10 to the third or 1,000 grams in a kilogram. So I'm going to use 10 to the third. Very good. Now it's a little counterintuitive that the 10 to the third appears next to the kilograms, but since we already labeled the 1 next to the kilogram, the 10 to the third will go with the grams. All right, we're going to multiply on top, divide on the bottom. Okay, and when I do that, I get... Five point six one eight kilograms, and I know it's kilograms because grams divided by grams cancels out, leaving me with kilograms. Looks good. Now this is a very reasonable number because we see that the kilogram value is smaller than the original gram value. Good job. Okay. Next, we're going to convert sixty-three liters to milliliters. We're going to follow the same exact procedure as before. So let's write down what we're given. So I'm given 63 liters. Great. And again, we're going to multiply by a conversion factor. The unit we're trying to cancel out, the unit we're given, is going to go in the denominator. So that's liters. Good. And the unit that we want is milliliters. Good. That'll go in the numerator. All right. Again, we have to figure out which number is larger. So looking at milliliters versus liters, which number is bigger according to table C? Well, milli is below the base unit I just wrote on table C. So milli must be smaller than the base of liters. So the bigger one is liters. That gets the one. All right. So now looking at milliliters, we want to decide what exponent's going to go there. So it says 10 to the negative 3, but I know from my notes I have to make all those exponents positive, so it must be 10 to the positive 3 or 1,000. So I'm going to write 1,000. All right, you can write it either way, either with the exponent or written out in a normal form. All right, we're going to multiply any numbers on top, divide any on the bottom. I get 63,000. My liters cancel out. I'm left with milliliters. My unit is milliliters. 63,000 milliliters. Again, reasonable number. This time we have a much bigger number in milliliters as compared to the original liters. Okay, you try part one. You folks are now going to do these problems shown here. You're going to show all of your work. Use the examples to help you along. Shoe funario number two. The base unit is not listed somewhere in the problem. Write down the number given with units, like before. Set up a conversion factor with the base unit on top and the original unit given at the bottom. Always put a 1 next to the unit that is larger. Fill in the other numerical value using table C. Note, 
you will always use a positive exponent. Now use another conversion factor, this time with the desired unit on top and the base unit on bottom. Multiply the numbers on top, divide by the numbers on bottom, write your answer with new unit. All right, so in these examples here, we can notice there is no base unit given. I'm given two units that both have prefixes. So I have to use this Shufunario 2 example. So follow along in your notes as we do these examples for you. All right, Shu, you ready? I think so. All right, so what is my given unit in number one here? All right, it looks like we've got kilograms there. Good, so I'm gonna write down my given number with units. Okay, got that. Okay, we're gonna multiply that times our conversion factor here. Right. So our conversion factor is gonna have the base unit on top and the original unit on bottom. So what is my original unit? Looks like kilograms. Okay, and my base unit here is gonna be what? Um, well, it's not milligrams, even though that's what I wanna convert it to, but I'll get there eventually. So base unit would just be grams. Good. Now, using table C, which one between grams or kilograms is the larger unit? Kilograms is higher up, so it's a larger unit. Good, so that one gets the one. Now, also using table C, what is the conversion factor for how many grams are in a kilogram? Well, there's 10 to the third next to kilograms, but I'd have to put it next to the grams, right? Yes, that is correct. All right. Good, all right. For our next step, we're gonna use another conversion factor. This time, the desired unit will go on top and the base unit on the bottom. So our base unit to cancel that out is what again? Oh, uh, grams. Good, so that'll go on the bottom. And what is our desired unit here in this first example? We're trying to find milligrams, so that'll go in the numerator. Perfect, and using the same steps we did before, which one of those two units is the larger unit? Well, now grams is actually the higher unit. Good, so that one gets the one. And using table C again, how many milligrams are in one gram? Well, it says 10 to the negative third, but I know I need to make it positive again, so we're gonna go 10 to the positive third. Perfect, the last thing to do is to multiply the numbers on top and divide by the numbers on the bottom, and you write out your new answer with your new unit. All right, so I'm multiplying by 1,000 and then 1,000 again. I'm only dividing by one, so I can kind of ignore that. I get a big, long number. I get 89 million. And let's check units, right? Yeah. Okay, so kilograms cancel out, grams cancel out, and left with milligrams. That's what I wanted in the first place. Perfect. All right, let's do the second one. What is our given with units here? All right, we've got decimeters here. Can write decimeters first. Perfect. Let's multiply that times our first conversion factor. Now remember, our base unit wasn't given, so we're going to write our base unit on top here. Okay, so we want to go to meters first. Good, and if we want to cancel out those decimeters, what's going to go on bottom? Uh, decimeters, definitely. Perfect. All right, now using table C, what is the larger value between those two units? Uh, the base unit, meters, is actually bigger than decimeters. So that means the meters gets the one. That's good, correct. And what would the value, according to table C, be of decimeters? Um, well, we'd have to make the 10 to the negative one, 10 to the positive one. Perfect. It's the same thing as 10. Perfect, just like 10. Good, now we have to do one more conversion factor to get to our desired unit. You know, wait, what is this desired unit? Well, that's that a good really, question. Really weird. Good, so we've got these units here. That is actually, the Greek symbol mu, which stands for micro. We're probably just gonna use the word micro all year, um, but its value is on table C, which we'll look to in a second, okay. but it means micro. It kinda looks like a little U, kinda weird, but okay, so micro. All right, let's get back to converting here. Good, so we wanna put our base unit on bottom, All right. and we wanna put our desired unit on top. Micrometers. Perfect, so now that we have those units, which one is the larger unit? Um, the base unit's higher up, so we're gonna put the one next to meters. That is correct, so that one goes there. And okay. what is the value for micro according to table C? Well, it says 10 to the negative six, I'm gonna make it positive. That's the same as a million, right? Yes, so it is. So I could just write 10 to the six, or I could write out a million. Either way, right? Either way. All right, okay. All right, last step is to multiply the numbers on top and divide by what's on bottom. All right, so I have to do 89 times one times a million and then divide by 10 at the end. It looks like I get 8,900,000, let's check the units. Decimeters cancel out, meters cancels out, and I'm left with 
micrometers. Perfect, good job. You try part two, show all your work. Remember, we don't have any base units in this example, so you're gonna have two conversion uh, factors. Also make sure your answer has proper units at the end. Bonus, scientific notation. You didn't see that one coming, did you? Scientific notation is used to simplify very large or very small numbers. Small numbers will have negative exponents. Large numbers will have positive exponents. We always want the decimal after the first digit. Let's do some examples. In the first two, we're going to put numbers into scientific notation. In the second two, we're going to take them out of scientific notation and put them in standard form. Let's start with 0 .0050. You ready, Foo? I am. All right, we want to put this into scientific notation. When we put things in scientific notation, we want the decimal after that first digit. So what's that going to look like? Right, so I'm going to move this decimal. One, two, three spots there. So it's going to be 5.0. All right, now, that new number that we wrote, is that smaller or larger than the original number? Well, 5.0 is much bigger than 0 .005, so it's bigger. All right, so if it's bigger, we kind of want to make it small again. So what kind of exponent are we going to need for it? So we're going to need a negative exponent to make it look smaller. All right, now it looks like you moved it over three to the right. I did, so it's going to be a 10 to the negative three. Good, we're in scientific notation. Let's look at the next one. We've got 634,000. Let's again start with the decimal after the first digit. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to put 6.3. Four. All right. Now, how does 6.34 compare to 634,000? Well, clearly 634,000 is a much larger number, so I need to make the 6.34 look much bigger. So I'm going to multiply it times 10 to the, well, I moved it five places, but to make it look bigger, I need a positive five, so the fifth power. Sounds good. All right, Shu, so these last two examples, we're gonna change these back into standard notation. Are you ready? I think so. All right, good. So we look at this first example of 1.5 times 10 to the third power. Is this gonna be a larger number or a smaller number? Well, we've got a positive exponent, so I'm gonna say a larger number. Good. So what's it gonna look like? All right, we're gonna move that decimal over three to the right. We're gonna get 1,500. Perfect. All right, let's look at the last one here. We got 3.56 times 10 to the negative fourth. Is this going to be a larger or a smaller number? Well, with the negative exponent, it's got to be smaller. Good. So what's it going to look like? Uh, let's see. I think we should move this over. One, two, three, four over to the left. Let's get this right. Point zero, 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 three, five, six. A much smaller number. Perfect. All right, ladies and gents, this is the U Try part three. We've got four examples. The first two, you're going to take those numbers and put them into scientific notation. And the last two are already in scientific notation. You are going to convert those into standard notation. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode. Until next time, it's been emotional. Today's episode is brought to you in part by... Not Hot Dog. What would you say if I told you there is an app on the market that tells you if you have a hot dog or not a hot dog? It is very good, and I do not want to work on it anymore. You can hire someone else. By Seafood Technologies, Inc. But we never off, or we zone to the break of dawn. S-E-I-E-N-C-E -E -E, in the hall, they call S-Wing. You know we never wear a tie, like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and a. It's like that, and like this, and like that, and a. It's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug and chill to the next episode.